Hi. Since we already know what a service does and how the dependency injection in Knob Commerce works, I invite you to create your own service, allowing you to work with the new support request entity. Let's open the Knob Services library that contains services. Here, we have to create the support request folder. This folder will contain our new service. Then, we create a new class named support request service. This class should be public. In this service, we will manipulate support requests using the appropriate repository. Let's add this repository as a private read-only field. Now, let's add a constructor with our repository as a parameter. This is how we use dependency injection. Just add appropriate interfaces as parameters to constructors. And the last step here is to assign a value to the local field. In the next step, I'm going to create an interface for our service as we did for each existing service in NopCommerce. It's actually not required to create such an interface. Even without this, you will be able to inject the service into a controller and use it. The only case when you have to create an interface is if you plan to override service methods in the future using plugins, for example. In this case, I will create an interface just to show you the interface mechanism. So let's add a new class named I support request service. Then I will declare some methods we will use to work with support requests against the database. First of all, we need to insert a support request. For this purpose, I will add the insert support request method. This method accepts a support request entity as a parameter. Then, to update a support request, for example, when the support team replies, we will create the update support request method. The only parameter in this method is also the support request entity. Then for deleting a support request, we will add a delete support request method with the same incoming parameter. The get support request by ID method allows us to retrieve a support request by a specified identifier. It returns a support request entity. The get support request by customer ID method allows us to find all support requests for a specified customer. This method returns a list of customer support requests. And the get all support requests method allows us to get all the support requests. For example, when we need to display them all and filter in the admin area, this method accepts the following parameters to filter support requests. Customer ID to search by a specified customer, created from UTC, and created to UTC dates to search between them. The same is for updated dates. Search text to search in the support request message. Store ID to search by a store, and page index and page size parameters, allowing us to retrieve a certain range of support requests. The get all support requests method returns a paged list of support requests. The paged list allows us to display records split by pages. This is what we will use when displaying support requests in the admin area. So we have finished with the interface. Let's move on to the service. We have to make our service inherit from the created interface and implement all its methods and not forget to mark them as a sync. Then, we have to provide all methods with the appropriate implementation. The delete support request method uses the default repository delete method. Then comes the get all support request method. Here we get all support requests using the get all page method of the repository. As you can see, we use the link expressions in this method to perform filtering and ordering operations. All the incoming parameters are used to filter support request records by them. And in the end, we order the records by the creation date. The page index and page size parameters come to the get all page method as well to find the needed range. Then in the get support request by ID method, we use the common get by ID repository method. To get support requests by customer ID, we use the get all method of the repository where we select the items with the specified customer ID only. The implementation of the insert support request method is quite simple. We use the insert method of the repository. In the update support request method, we also use the default repository method, update. That's all. Our service is ready to use. Next, we should register this service in the knob startup class. This way, we will be able to inject the service into a controller and use it there. To do this, follow these steps. 
open the NOP startup class from NOP Web Framework Infrastructure. In the Configure Services method, you can see all the used services. Let's add our new service at the end of the service list using the Add Scope method. If you decide not to create a service interface, you still register your service within the Add Scope method. Just don't specify the interface like this. That's actually all. Now we can use our service in the application. Thank you.